Hello everyone, welcome to Informatica Cloud videos. In today's video, we will be looking into how to use a joiner transformation in Informatica Cloud Mapping Design. The agenda in this video would be a brief introduction of a joiner transformation, type of joins offered by analysis like normal join, master join, detail join, full outer join, along with the uses of a joiner transformation as per the requirement. Also, we will be showing a quick demonstration on how to create and use a joiner transformation in ISS. So let's get started with a brief introduction of a joiner transformation. The functionality of a joiner transformation is to join the data from a two related heterogeneous sources. For example, we can use the joiner transformation to join the account information from the back file with the data from the Salesforce account object. Join the transformation, join the data based on the join condition and the join type. A join condition matches the fields between the two sources and you can create a multiple join condition based on your requirement. When you link a transformation to the join transformation, it's connected to the master or a detail group. To improve the job performance, we usually recommend to connect the transformation that represents the smaller data set to the master group and a larger data set to the detail group. To join more than two sources in the mapping, we can use a multiple joiner transformation and one can continue this exercise until you join all the source pipeline. In this video, we will be focusing on how to create and use a joiner transformation in ISC. Type of join Offers by an ISCS are as follows. The join types determines the result set that passes to the rest of the mapping and defines the set of data that is included in the result. You can use the following join type in the mapping. The first one is the normal join, which includes the rows with the matching join condition and discard the rows that do not match the join condition. The second one is the master outer join, which includes all the rows from a detail pipeline and the matching rows from a master pipeline and it discard the unmatched rows from the master pipeline. The third one is the retail outer join, which is just an opposite of a master outer join, which include all the rows from a master pipeline and the matching rows from a detail pipeline, whereas it discard the unmatched rows from a detail pipeline. Fourth one is a full outer join, which include the rows with the matching join condition and all the incoming data from a master pipeline and retail pipeline. The uses of a joiner transformation are as follows. One can use a joiner transformation to remove the duplicate rows in the mapping. The, as informed in the previous slide, the joiner transformation supports normal, right outer, left outer, and full outer join, so you can retrieve the data based on the join condition. You can include the multiple input groups in the joiner transformation. You can define the two input groups. Those are master and retail group. Additionally, for large volume of data, we usually recommend to have enough, enough disk space for the caching in the runtime environment as Informatica Cloud will create a cache file in the secure agent machine when we are using the joiner transformation. So let's go ahead and create a demo task in order to join the two sources in ICS. Browse to Informatica Cloud portal and log into an ICS using credential. Once you have logged into an IECS, navigate to data integration page and where we will be creating a new mapping. Now click on new button to create a new mapping. Now select mapping option. Click on create to create a new mapping. Here I will be giving a name to the mapping. I'm giving the name as joiner transformation. I'm going to use the two sources, both would be the flat file. Let me configure my first source. We'll be selecting my first source connection, that would be a flat file. Now let me select my source object. Here I'm going to select the source object as an account.
now I'm going to drag and drop my second source in the mapping designer. Let me configure my second source as well. Let me select my second source connection. Once done, let me select my second source object as well. Now let me grab and drop the joiner transformation in the mapping designer. As in so, there are two input groups in the joiner transformation. One is the master, another one is the retail. We usually recommend to connect the smaller data set to a master group and the larger data set to a retail group in order to improve the performance of a job. Now let me go to a join condition. We see this error when there is a matching fields coming from both of the sources. To resolve the issue, I'm going to give the prefixes to those fields which is coming from a master as a master underscore and the field coming from a detail as a detail underscore. You can see an option join type where we can select the type of joints offered by an ISX. I'm going to select the full outer join. Now we'll define the join condition over here. Once done, we'll see the advanced properties of joiner transformation. You can see the tracing level as one of the option, which is nothing but a debugging property in order to capture more information in detail in the session log. You can also define the cache directory path over here. One can make use of this option null ordering in the master and null ordering in the detail in the joiner transformation. If you see there is one option called a sorted input. We usually recommend to check this option whenever you have a large amount of data. It is always recommend to check this option in order to increase the performance. In this video task, I'm not going to check this sorted input option as my data set is less. Now let me connect the output of a joiner transformation to the target and configure my target. Let me select my target connection as well. Here I am going to create an object as a runtime. Once done, validate if the mapping created is correct or not. Yeah, it's valid. Now I'll save the mapping. You can also create a mapping configuration task on the top of this mapping and can save and run it. I'm going to run my mapping. I need to select my runtime environment and run the mapping. Into my job to see the status of a mapping task run. Seems to be running. You can see the execution of mapping is being completed and it has been showing as success. With this, we have come to an end of a demo. For more information on the topic discussed in this video, please refer to the knowledge base article or the following link. We would love to hear back from you. You can mail us your feedback at supportvideos at the rate informatica.com or tweet us at twitter.com info support. Thanks for watching the video. Have a good day.